Um, I'm going to start with the reporters. John Carl, what do we know? Well, the committee, as they've gone through these hearings, Nicole, they've been gathering more information. And in fact, as they've uh, had the witnesses that they've talked to so far come forward, uh, they've been hearing from others. Uh, you, you heard uh, Liz Cheney make an appeal publicly for Pat Cipollone uh, to come forward uh, to, uh, to testify. Uh, they're still negotiating that. No indication that Cipollone is coming. I'm told he is not the witness uh, tomorrow. But the point is, you know, members of the White House counsels, people from the White House counsel's office have testified. We've heard from Eric Hirschman. He's been almost a, a star of these hearings. He worked side by side with Pat Cipollone. They're hoping that as, uh, you know, people that were close to Trump see others come forward and present information, that, that more information will come out. And I'm told that has been happening. So, yes, these hearings have been dramatic. They've been impactful. Uh, they've uh, un revealed a lot of new information and new testimony. But as the hearings have been under way. The committee has been gathering more evidence. We're going to talk to all of you about how atypical the January 6th select committee's public hearings are. But John Carl, this announcement of a public hearing tomorrow is atypical, even for an atypical congressional investigation. Can you take us behind the scenes? Do, do you know when they decided to schedule tomorrow's hearing? Do you know if they're all here. Do you know if they will all be here? Do you know if it's live testimony? What do we know about how this came to be announced today? Well, they have been, uh, they, they had held open the possibility that this would be a hearing date. So it is atypical. It did come as a surprise. It was a late development. And I am told it is based on, on witness testimony. I mean, that's the key thing. They, uh, they, they have been negotiating with potential witnesses, as you know, from Vice President Mike Pence on down. Again, I'm told it's not Mike Pence tomorrow. Uh, but they have <laughs> been, but they have been, uh, have had ongoing negotiations with witnesses uh, that, you know, are, are reluctant to testify live. And, and I think that what uh, a key factor in tomorrow's surprise hearing is they've got somebody who has agreed to testify. Um, Mike Schmidt and Jackie Elmany, you both have um, some fantastic new reporting over the weekend about what this committee has achieved thus far. Um, I'll start with you, Jackie. Do, do you have anything to add about how a surprise public hearing came to be announced today and what sort of strategic hurdles this committee still views as being in front of them? So we have just a tiny bit more reporting uh, than than what John Carl just said, which is really uh, that this announcement was shrouded in secrecy. Um, even senior staff and committee members, staff too, lawmakers, were in uh, the dark about the details of tomorrow's hearing. And after news quickly spread, members on the committee were asked actually explicitly not to do any press and to uh, go dark. So uh, it, it suggests that tomorrow's hearing, um, it, it, there's an urgency and a sensitivity that we hadn't necessarily seen with these previous <clears throat> hearings and actually might in fact be a culmination of the previous hearings. Uh, obviously, there's been a lot of attention on what the committee's doing, and I think the last hearing especially, some of the revelations that were made have really upped the temperature, and you have to wonder if the committee finally has struck a negotiation with a witness that they're worried could bow out post 4th of July, and they're eager to just get them out there and and, and continue with the momentum that they've been seeing uh, just far. But um, yeah, Michael uh, Schmidt and I wrote some similar pieces with my colleagues Sarah Ellison and, and Josh Dossi about these atypical hearings and sort of the structure that we've been seeing, unlike congressional hearings of yore where there's lots of bloviating, lots of lawmakers speaking. <laughs> and instead, this is very witness focused, very video heavy. There is a beginning, middle, middle, and an end. It's almost in uh, the structure of some sort of political thriller, although obviously this mm -hmm. is very much real life. And uh, we've also been told that Liz Cheney in particular has been a master at driving the arc, uh, the narrative arc that we've been seeing in each hearing that all sort of will coalesce together at the very end. Mike Schmidt, um, I, I want to put the same question to you that I, that I put to, to Jonathan and Jackie about what, what else we might know about tomorrow. But I, I want to add a, a second part about this committee's 
sort of communications acumen. And it has not been, other than rescheduling last Wednesday's hearing, which, which um, you, you reported was really about not being prepared, not being ready for prime time in the committee's view. What do you make of, of this is something they haven't done before. They haven't abruptly changed their hearing schedule in the public phase to add a witness. What do you think it says about what they've got tomorrow? It's funny. I was thinking about this. At the Times, there's this legendary investigative reporter named Walt Bogdanich. And many years ago, when he was giving a, a tutorial sort of workshop to us in the newsroom, he said that when you have someone cooperating with you and talking to you, whether that means that they've allowed you into the room with them or they are an open line of communication, you need to get everything you can from them um, in that moment, you cannot wait because as soon as you walk out the door or you walk away from that call and you put it off another minute, another hour, another day, the chances of something happening simply increase. So what I'm anxious to know here is that whether this decision is motivated by that investigative, um, you know, sort of guide, guide, guidepost that, you know, you know, investigative reporters rely on and other investigators do. When you have someone who's agreed to do something extraordinary, and I think testifying before the country is extraordinary, you have to move as quickly as possible to nail that down because who knows what will happen. And this is this is not just you know, trying to get someone to cooperate with the committee. This is trying to get someone to go and basically, it looks like, testify against the former president of the United States, who has millions and millions of followers that um, uh, have shown a willingness to do whatever he tells them to do. So uh, I'm anxious to know how much of that investigative guidepost is driving the decision here.